Kaz Young here from Everyday Property Investing, here with a property news update for you. Got a new podcast out this week with Justine Pollard talking all about investing in the US. Now, it's a really compelling argument looking at the numbers in terms of US investing. The buy-in price is very low, the um, yields are very high, and it can suit a lot of investors. A lot of people do look at it as a higher risk investment because it is uh, investing overseas in a market that they don't know a lot about. And that's why Justin Pollard's organisation, who are helping people to invest in the US property market, can be quite helpful. I found it really interesting talking to Justin. I think you'll probably find the, the interview very interesting as well. So check that out. Now, just last night, we held a webinar with Joe Brown from NRAS Real Estate. It's another form of cash flow positive investing is NRAS, and it's a way of investing in new properties that provide a large tax rebate for investors. And um, once again, numbers look quite compelling when you look at this form of investing. The webinar was really, really useful. Joe walked through everything with us of the ins and outs of how NRAS works and um, had some great slides that really talked through the process with us. So that video is available on the website. You can check that out if you're interested in NRAS. I was doing some research for a client this week and I wanted to find out all of the suburbs that were within 10 kilometres of Brisbane CBD and I wanted to make a list of those suburbs so that I could work my way through them. Now I was trying to work out what's the best way of doing this, you know, do I look on Google Maps and just write down all the suburbs or, or you know, what other ways can I do it? And then I thought, okay, well, I'll have a little search for, for tools and I found something really cool. It was a website called myboot.com.au and on that website you can actually look for any suburb you want and it'll give you a suburb profile which is really useful gives you crime statistics on the area, it gives you photographs. And then the other thing you can do is search by distance. And that's what I was using for and I found that really useful. So I could put in, find me all suburbs within 10 kilometers of Brisbane CBD and it gave me a nice list of all of those suburbs. So check it out, it's myboot.com.au. It's a free website, you might find it useful in your research. Now this week I've been down to Redcliffe in Brisbane. Um, as you know, I run a buyer's agency in Brisbane and Queensland. And so I was looking in the Redcliffe region for a client who's interested in that particular area. And I thought it's an interesting suburb. I might just tell you a bit about it in case it's somewhere that you might be interested in. It's around about 27 or 28 Ks out of the Brisbane CBD, but it's quite easily commutable. The attractive thing about Redcliffe, it's a really nice sort of beachside feel to it. It is a beachside town. Um, it has been traditionally very affordable and is still very affordable. I think median house prices around Redcliffe are around about 340,000 at the moment. Um, and there are suburbs along that waterfront area, such as Scarborough, Redcliffe, Margate, Woody Point. Um, and then further inland, there's some suburbs along the way to Redcliffe, like Kippering, Rothwell and North Lakes. We can get kind of brand new homes there, or very close to new homes there for very affordable prices. Another interesting thing about this particular area is there's a train line going in from the existing Petrie station. They're going to extend that line out toward Redcliffe. Um, with stations on the way in um, Kippering there'll be a station is the last is the end of the line there'll be another couple of stations in there as well including Rothwell so that's a quite an interesting area to look at if you are interested in um, affordable properties just outside of Brisbane now lastly I just want to leave you with a quick tip about property management I've been helping a client of mine to get a property manager for a house that we've purchased up in Mackay and um, I think when you're looking for a property manager, it's really important to take it seriously, make a list, make a comparison between agents and really interview the agent. So what I tend to do is I go on to say realestate.com, I look up properties for rent in that area. Now I'm doing that for two reasons. One, I wanna identify who's actually managing properties there. And two, I wanna look at how they advertise those properties. So what are the texts that they use in their advertisements and what are the types of pictures that they use in their advertisements and are they presenting their properties well. Now I'll usually make a list of at least five um, managing agents and put those into a spreadsheet and then I'll have my list of questions that I'm going to ask each one of them and that'll be around things like um, you know how often do they do inspections, how often do they collect the rent, how often do they manage their arrears, um, how what are their fees of course you want to know their fees commissions what sort of fees do they have some people have letting fees re-letting fees advertising fees and some statement fees and some only charge you for some of those things so you want to put all of that in a spreadsheet and then ring each and every one of those property management companies and find out the information jot it into your spreadsheet so then you can make a comparison 
about the management that you're going to get at those agencies. So I hope you enjoyed this property news update. If you're after information about property investing, head over to everydaypropertyinvesting.com and if I can help you at all with anything, don't hesitate to contact me directly. I'll always answer questions and comments from people. So uh, good luck with your investing.